High formation for the Trojans. Valerelli yet again the man in motion. D'Amelio drops back to pass, looking for Wide the open. end zone. It is caught, touchdown Trojans. Number 87, Kyle Johnston on the touchdown catch. The BR Trojan version of Rob Gronkowski in this postseason. Two touchdown receptions last week. A big touchdown reception this week, possibly saving the BR Trojan season. Excellent catch. He was kind of tripping over his own feet backwards into the end zone. And BR quickly on the verge of going up by four points. Ball is snapped. The kick is up. And the kick is no good. So Brockton now only has to get into field goal distance to tie this game and get it into overtime with under three minutes to go. That, that, thing, that makes things extremely manageable here for the boxers because all of a sudden, you don't have to go from possibly the 20, 25 yard line to the end zone. You have to go from your 20, 25 yard line to maybe the 30, 25 yard line for a field goal to tie things up here. And you still have 253 and maybe a couple timeouts left. So six to three, the score, Bridgewater Random on top. And we're going to see, as you called it, Corey, the golden leg of Brockton. Should Brockton not get a touchdown here? Number 12 back to kick. That is George Lampros, the junior kicker. Red zone defense has been certainly a flaw for the BR Trojans this season. This is certainly the point that they really need to come out and play here. Dominic Simpson looking to receive the kick it will not be returned it bounces out of bounds and we will start from the 40 yard line what are you thinking <laughs> and i understand the point i, I think he tried to squib it right but he was wildly unsuccessful yeah baron is not happy about that that is pretty ridiculous now i believe it is a re-kick from further back is it 10 yards is it john at the I high believe it's level. 10 yards, and if it's 10 yards with Lampros, he was taking shots from about 50, so maybe this is what BR was looking at, Lampros was looking at, you know, possibly trying to pin Brockton even further back into their own part of the field. It is only a five yard penalty. Dominic Simpson back to return. Let's see if he attempts the squib again. He does not. It is returned at the 20 yard line and busting up field is number 33, Edmund Kelsey, who was grabbed by the Pants and brought down at the 34-yard line. And that is where Brockton will start, most likely the final drive of regulation time. Jordan Marcano had a key stop there right around the 25-yard line that allowed the ball to get pushed up to the 35. And at this point here, if you're running back for the Brockton Boxers, at this point, I don't even know if distance is as big of a goal as ball security here. Because if you get three, four yards on a carry, that's all you really need. The big thing is make sure you don't have any extra hands trying to get inside and grab that ball. If I'm Brockton, I'm going all out here. I mean, running the ball up the middle to be conservative or whatever, just trying to keep the ball in sick. You need to get you need to get yards here. I think they come out here and start throwing the ball a little bit and try to see if their athleticism can come up against the size of the BR defensive backfield. Kilroy in the shotgun, four receiver set, back to pass, looking long, throwing it up. Complete to Ballard, he's wide open, headed for the end zone to the 10, the five, touchdown, Boxers! Ball well, shoot, I just told you. <laughs> Marcus Ballard sending the Boxers back into the lead. It is nine to six. One play on what I said was well, the part of the game. Excessive celebration here by the whole Brockton family that ran out into the field. So Marcus Ballard, let's see, that was about a 60, 65 yard, 65 play right there. yard catch and run by Marcus Ballard, the tight end slash linebacker slash fullback slash jack of all trades slash quarterback in the first half. Everything for the Brockton Boxers and there is no better member of this team to catch what could very well be the winning touchdown. And now Ryan Clifford. Just remember, there's two minutes and 33 seconds left on the clock. That is plenty really, of time. Yeah. I'll give you that, it is plenty of time. Ryan Clifford to put the boxes up by four points. The 
ball is snapped. The kick is up and the kick is good. 10 to six Brockton on top of Bridgewater Raynham and the Trojans now find themselves in the position that they need to score a touchdown or their season is over. A good job by Ballard basically splitting the defenders there and outstepping I believe that was Reagan on the defense there for the BR Trojans. But yeah, I almost had to imagine how, this, how the play in this almost feels for the BR Trojans because they just fought for basically the entire fourth quarter to get their first score in the end zone here. And now all of a sudden you're back out on the field, 2.33 left to go in the ball game. Well, they have to stop being so emotional, emotional and just get their heads out of their butts and let's go, you know, get pumped up. You can't, you know, I hate when people say, oh, well, that's going to be deflating. Well, you know what? Second up, you gave up the touchdown. Now let's go. Score. There you go. That's as simple as it is. Just keep it conservative, yeah. going down there, get field position, then wind it up with the, the quarterback. The quarterback should be feeling great. He just went and had one of the best drives of the, of the game, throwing the Varelli, and then to uh, Johnson in the end zone. Let's go. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Suck it up, and let's go. Maybe you need to go back on the field. Maybe Tell I us do. how you really feel, well, Corey. that's what I'm telling you. I hate it when people get so, oh, Jesus, I don't know. Oh, I can't do it. We're down by oh, four. Oh, jeez. Sound like Mort from Family Guy. Let's go. <laughs> so Let's it is go. an excessive uh, celebration penalty for Brockton, who will now kick off from the 25-yard oh, line. Well, there you go. The That's 40. what happened to BR with the thing, with the penalty kicking out of bounds. Let's go. We got it right here. Suck it up. Let's go. Now, it would not surprise me if Ryan Clifford kicked this into the end zone for a touchback. I'm joking. I'd be, I'd be impressed. Oh, he squibs it. It is picked up at the 27-yard line by number 24, who, uh, number three rather, who is hit by pretty much every player on the field. That was Alex Smith on the return to the Trojans' 41-yard line. I think the ball might have popped loose but Bridgewater Random did recover so excellent starting field position for the Trojans with two minutes and 26 seconds left in the fourth quarter again down by four points to the Brockton boxes in this MIAA semi-final the winner most likely headed to the Hawk Bowl in Westwood to face the Severian Hawks both teams losing to the Hawks earlier in this season D'Amelia back to pass. Looking long over the middle, and it is off of the hand of number 11, Cade McNaughton. Bouncing off of the legs of three boxer defensive backs and falling to the ground in complete second and 10. D'Amelia's got to keep his head up here. He looks, oh, it's driving me nuts. Have some confidence in yourself. Stop looking like your dog died. At this go. point, at this point, do you go in the middle of the field or do you go closer no, to the? No, I don't know what he was doing there. You got to go on the outside so you can try to save some time, make Varelli catch it, and have him go out of bounds. I don't know what you're doing throwing it across the middle in the, to the defense. Demelia in the shotgun drops back to pass. He is hit, brushes off the hit, throws it into the middle, and again off of the right hand of McNaughton. But you can't fault McNaughton for that. That was at the shoelaces. And McNaughton had to go diving feet first, trying to knock that ball back up in the air. And again, D'Amelia kind of looks down on himself, looking like his season might be over. He's over talking to head coach Dan Buron. He's quickly going to get his head back in this game. This game not over by any stretch of the imagination. Two minutes, 15 seconds left. It's third and 10. You're on the 40-yard line. And a timeout going to be called by the Bridgewater Random Trojans. So we saw the 41-yard field goal by Ryan Clifford. And then we saw, I believe, an 11-yard uh, reception by number 87, Kyle Johnson, for the Bridgewater Random Trojans. And then we saw the 65-yard bomb to Marcus Ballard. Those are the only scores of the game. And this game, again, not over by any stretch of the imagination, John. A lot of people before this game thought this was going to be an ugly low scoring game hanging around the 14 10 14 7 area so this is certainly as a lot of people thought here certainly have to give Brockton's defense a lot of credit here pressuring D'Amelio to make throws that he probably shouldn't if it was any other game 
Third and 10, D'Amelio once again in the shotgun, drops back to pass, looks short, completes to number 22. He's gotta get out of bounds, and he does. That was Matt Reagan on the catch. Number 26. Uh, 26, Sean Noel Jr. rather, on the reception. It is not a first down, but it is now fourth and about four and a half, five yards to go for Bridgewater Random Trojans who have no option. They are going for it. This is the game right here, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly, I'm not exactly sure why Valorelli isn't out there. Valorelli did a great job spark plugging that last offensive drive. I don't know if I'd go with this play without 34. D'Amelia in the shotgun. He is surrounded by two backs, and we have a timeout called by the Bridgewater Random Trojans. No, by the Brockton Boxers, rather. Timeout. Well, right here, D Bjorn might be thinking the same thing that you were just saying. Maybe, you know, you got to get Valorelli, Valorelli out there because he is kind of that guy that, you know, that Edelman, that Welker kind of guy, that, or even maybe even a Shane Vereen that can go out there, make that play, and be that versatile back that can come out there, and he has the ability to make the guys miss rather than a, a traditional receiver. So here's the situation. It's fourth and about four and a half yards. Bridgewater ran him down by four points, 10 to six the score, Brockton on top. BR needs a first down and then a touchdown if they want to keep their season alive. Whichever team loses is headed into the loser's bracket, which is another one of my gripes with this new playoff go, format. Well, everyone's got to play games. Everyone gets a medal. Welcome to 2015. Everyone gets a blue Mothers of America. Well, this certainly spices things up for Thanksgiving. Fourth and four, uh, fourth and four and a half. This is the game. Steve D'Amelia in the shotgun. Two receivers out to give to number 26. Bust up ahead, has a first down. Noel Jr., who is still not going down. He is brought down you get the hurry up offense. Five yard line, first down Trojans, and their season is still alive. Good job by Brockton's defensive line there, not making sure Sean Noel falls to the ground here. Try and exert every effort you can and try and strip Noel of the ball because Noel has had fumble issues, A, in this game, B, all season long. Corey, I, I saw you when they handed that ball off. I thought you were going to have an aneurysm. I thought I you did. were going to have an aneurysm on the last play, so, you know. Demilly back to pass. Looking Ooh. long towards the end zone. He's got it. No, oh. and that should be a flash. Should be. I saw him grab the arm of number Jeez. 11, Cade McNaughton. I mean, no flag thrown. I'm the Brockton guy here, and I say that was a penalty. Yeah, Luke Lewando maybe getting set to be sending uh, Christmas cards to the officials because that was that seemed like it was more of a pass interference holding call than the other one. Earlier. Let's watch. You're gonna see here. On the replay, he grabs his yeah, arm. you can't grab his hand. Uh, it looked, he, he it looked holding as holding his hand all the way down the sideline. It looked like McConnell was trying to separate himself as well, but I certainly give Lewando a lot more credit on that one. Well, here we go. Second and ten, three receivers set. D'Amelio in the shotgun, surrounded by two running backs. D'Amelio splits up to the near side, looking, and it is complete. Inbounds was number 11, Cade McNaughton. Second and about eight now. It wasn't that big of a, I mean, third and eight. And a timeout immediately called by head coach Dan Bjorn. So one minute and 31 seconds left. Third and five to go for the Bridgewater Raider Trojans from the 30. Eight yard line. At this, Th this is going to be a really great finish. At this point here, I don't know if you're the Trojans, how many more running plays you can afford to run here on third down because because at some point you're going to have to start breaking out the passing game. Yeah, we don't know the timeout situation. It doesn't tell us here. I mean, I haven't been keeping track at all either, but it's kind of hard to. I would say you've either got one or two per side left. Maybe. I, I, but I get, like John said earlier, I wouldn't be surprised to see if you get. I mean, he's not out there right now. Maybe next couple of plays, get Varelli out there, try to get him doing what he was doing to get this this half started. That's the kind of guy you need on the outside. But you do have Noel. I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe maybe another run from him. At this point here, you just need to find a way to stop the clock. Get that first down. Just think about the next five, six yards as opposed to the next 39. Again, D'Amelio in the shotgun. Three receivers set. The give to number 26, who instead of busting up field, now is a first Smart. down. Smart play. Try to get him to the sideline. He got out. He got out. He did. 
excellent awareness by and first Sean down. Jr. That that was a smart play by that junior running back, Noel. That's a, that's exactly what you want him to do right there. So first down and ten to go for the Trojans from the 33-yard line. You know, to have a junior running back like that, to have the knowledge of the game, to have the, the, the football smarts to get out of bounds right there. We'll see him in the replay, replay right here. Instead of getting the, the extra couple yards there, he went for the sideline and was pushed out of bounds. One minute, 22 seconds left. Bridgewater Arena has to go 33 yards to the house. Emilia gets the snap of the shotgun, rolls out to the near side, is gonna keep it himself. He is hit, spins off the initial hit, and then goes down after a gain of about one. Now in that situation, do you think you'd be better off throwing that out of bounds instead of doing that now? You know, it's gonna be on, having you burn another timeout and or have it go under a minute. That's kind of tough, because you look right here, he can, instead of running it up the middle, that's something you do what earlier in the game that maybe you can you can get five or six yards out of it but at this point in the game do you really want your quarterback taking hits like that and he had plenty of room to the near side there wasn't a boxer in sight right even if he split straight to the sideline to stop the clock he had plenty of room to do so exactly i don't i don't understand the the, the mind process of that of the miller so it is now second and about eight and a half to go with a minute and 12 seconds to go again bridgewater random now has to go to the house down by four points with about a minute 15 left in this fourth quarter Dal Riley still not on the field still on the sidelines with coach Buran. John, does that kind of surprise you a little bit? It, it surprised me a little bit because he was the spark plug to that last, last offensive drive, but right now, Sean Knowles is certainly getting the job done here. It's going to be very interesting to see here because we've seen Demilio play out of the shotgun for the first time in a long time. Right. And three receivers set, the Emilio on the shotgun. He gets the snap, looking to pass, throws it over the middle. That is complete to McNaughton. Nice. Oh, you got to hurry it up. Clock does stop momentarily for the change to reset. They're gonna spike this right here. And the Amelia does in fact spike it to stop the clock with 103 to go. It's a first down, or now it's a second down and 10 from the 20 yard line. This finish just got a whole lot more interesting, fellas. Like I told you, how much time was left after that touchdown? That's a problem right there. Yeah, you got, if you're Brockton, you gotta be happy that you just got that huge touchdown, but then you always have to know you, you, if you give the other team too much time, this, this is what can happen. Well, let's see. I'm going to give a shout out to both fan bases who are still here for what's going to be a fantastic finish. Sold out crowd, standing room only around the fence here at Bridgewater Arena High School. They immediately gets the snap, whistles blow. And the parents starting to show up to pick up their kids as well. And that is a false start against the Bridgewater Random Trojans, and we have some not so happy coaches here in the press box. So it'll be second now and 15 to go. You have to wonder if that answers that question we had a few plays ago how many timeouts does BR have? We might have just learned that BR has zero timeouts left. I guess the good news is the clock stops with the penalty. The bad news is the clock has already stopped because they called the timeout. Well, they spiked the ball rather. D'Amelio on the shotgun. Three receiver set to the near side. D'Amelio gets the snap, rolls out to the near side. He's going to be hit, rolls off the hit, looking for oh, the end zone. It's it's up up and it's going to be pass interference. Wando on the out. field. Luke Wando going to be called for this one. Finally, at least they saw that one. Even Helen Keller could have made that call. They're discussing whether it's there's, offensive or defensive. There's two flags here, so. I believe one of them's making a sign for face mask. It is gonna be pass interference against the defense. Well, it's also tripping. Merry Christmas from Brockton to the Bridgewater Random Trojans. Right, that was also tripping as but well. Right. But right now, Logan, who just joined the field right now, Kyle Johnston, number 87, the recipient well, of that touchdown pass on that last scoring drive. Watch 22. At the pass interference call. Tripped up right That's there. Number was seven, yeah. By Luke Wando. He got two saving graces, not that time, though, by the referees. First and goal from the nine and a half. 56.2 seconds to go. 87 on the right. under center this time for the first time this drive. He drops back to pass, looking for the end zone. 
He's going to be hit and goes down, loses the ball. They're going to rule him down, but a flag down. A late flag thrown in. I think Kingsley I might have been hitting the quarterback. DK went down. That's it was surprising at the very least that Demelia had the ball even it off. as he was going down. Just kind of like a free they wait, time. They waved off the flat. So now you have to be careful because now the clock's going to go on the referee's go. No, but that was incomplete, John. Oh. So I thought he was stacked back there. I don't, I don't know. You might be. I thought that was incomplete. Well, 87 uh, Johnson is off the field. Let's see what they, they try to do here. Yeah, it is incomplete, I guess. So it is now second and goal. Clock stops. I believe we have a timeout called by head coach Peter Colombo, who's 10 yards on the field. 47.5 seconds. This has been the longest two minutes of any of our lives, I'm sure. 10 to 6 Brockton. Bridgewater Random on the doorstep. They have a second and goal from the nine and a half. Think about it. we just saw the turning point of that drive a couple plays ago. That pass interference penalty that brought the Trojans to within to goal with goal to go situation here. So now you only have two more shots or three more shots at the end zone. It'll be very interesting to see how Steve Demille is going to try and get this ball in the end zone. Because now we start seeing more and more Brock and linemen coming up to try and bring the house to Steve Demille. Demille. Back in the shotgun after spending two plays under center, two plays that were unsuccessful to stay, to say the least. Going the same formation that got them down to their current situation. Surrounded by two running backs with three receivers. Demele in the shotgun, not in the man in motion. Demele gets the snap, looking for the end zone, throws it. Touchdown. Did he get down? No. No, that is incomplete. Number 11 was out of bounds, Cade McNaughton. Let's see the replay on that if we have it. Well, it looked as though McNaughton was actually picked up and shoved out of bounds at the very last second. Yeah. It's gonna be that was very close. close. You can't push him out of bounds either. You can't push. That's right. So let's watch. The Amelia back to pass there. Ooh, that is a... He caught that. I think just landing out of bounds was. I mean, you can't McNaughton. push the guy out of bounds. It you was, can't push yeah. the referee. Was right on top it was, of it. It was pretty yeah. close to being right out of bounds in the first place without the push. Yeah. So 42 seconds to go. Third and goal now for Bridgewater Arena. Three receivers set. The Amelia in the shotgun. The Amelia back to Ooh, pass. Screen pass and brought down. That's going to be fourth down for the Trojans. He was stopped for a loss was number 26, Sean Noel Jr. Time winding down under 40 seconds. And the clock is still running. 23 now, now down to 20. Bridgewater Rams suddenly they taking they they their time. There's nothing to lose here, fourth down. Worst case, you turn the ball over on downs. 10 seconds to go, last play of the game. Demilly back to pass, looking for the end zone. Packed. That is deflected by Lawando. And with 4.9 seconds, the Brockton Boxers are going to move on for the right to have a rematch against the number one seeded Severian Hawks. Well, unfortunately, time was a factor on that play. D'Amelio was basically in scramble mode there for the last 45 seconds or so. And this is a scenario that he hasn't been in. This is a scenario a lot of these players have not been in here. So it's basically a shock. But let's take a look at this last play because Demelia certainly had a good look going to the near side. He had a couple of blockers there. And Throwing off by just that much. There were two Bridgewater random receivers and four defensive backs for the Brockton Boxers. And not for the first time tonight, not putting enough mustard on the pass to get it through to the Trojan receivers. And now Brockton in victory formation with 4.9 seconds to go. Michael Kilroy under center. He takes the knee and Brockton is moving on to the South sectional final for the first time in this playoff format. They defeat their Thanksgiving Day rivals, the Bridgewater Rams Chargers by a final score of 10 to six. 
John, what did you see in this game that led to such a low-scoring game, A, and led to the Brockton victory? Well, I think the reason it was such a low-scoring game is because you saw the defensive line from both of these teams try and make their presence known. We saw Brockton on that last defensive drive pressure Demille into making throws that nine times out of ten he should not be making or come anywhere close to making. Meanwhile, for the Brockton Boxers on the offensive line, certainly had to give credit to Marcus Ferrar. Certainly had the big turning point and, of course, that big touchdown to make it 10-6 in the fourth quarter. Corey, it doesn't get any much closer than that. Bridgewater ran him on the doorstep in the, the final minutes of this game. They just couldn't get it done. No, and I think that's what you kind of see. It's kind of the, I don't know if you want to call it inexperience of Amelia, but just like John said, He's never really been in that situation, so you see him go down there, and it's and it's tough. He, threw, he made a great pass to the to the uh, corner of the end zone to McNaughton, but just couldn't couldn't get it in bounds, and it was tough. It was good defense by Brockton, but I think that's what you kind of see is kind of the the, the kind of walking on eggshells, I guess, that Demelia had going up against a good defensive uh, Brockton team. Corey, your final thoughts on the game? I, I mean, I, I wish Brockton good luck, but I mean, it's going to be tough going up against Severian. And hopefully, we'll have a good JV game against Brockton again coming up, and you know, on Thanksgiving Day, we'll get to see each other again. But yeah, it's going to be tough for Brockton. We have to up see each the, other again. Are you kidding me? No, I hope once, yeah. once wasn't enough. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, it's going to be it's going to be tough for Brockton. I think they know that going into the Hawk Bowl, it, it, a lot of people are going up against them, so it's going to be tough. You can say all the things you want about Thanksgiving not being a rivalry or being a rivalry. But what we just saw on this field, I think, just kickstarted the next four years for a rivalry here. Because when you start throwing playoffs into the field here, that's when a rivalry is born. We just saw two teams try and give it their all. Brockton came out on top. They're going to have an extremely tough test against the Barry, or maybe they'll walk out and get Catholic Memorial. But nevertheless, we saw a great offense in the Brockton Boxers tonight. My MVPs of the game got to be Marcus Pollard for Brockton and the uh, receiver for the Lone. Uh, Bridgewater ran in touchdown Kyle Johnston. You guys pretty much agree with that? Here, here. That, that sounds like a good call to me. Well, the final score again from Bridgewater Random High School. The Brockton Boxers 10 and the Bridgewater Random Trojans 6. Brockton moves on to play the winner of the Severian Hawks versus the Catholic Memorial Knights. We will have that game for you on Brockton Community Day Access. But for now, our executive producers, Jeff Fowler, Mark Lindy. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson along with Corey, who I never heard your last name. Cloudman. It's Cloudman. Corey Cloudman and John Luck. Again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you on the Barking side for the next game, and Bridgewater, I'm sure, as well. Have a good night.